What is up, Coradix? In this video, I'm going to be discussing my top 10 overall picks for vehicles in GTA Online in 2023. Now, I want to clarify this is my personal opinion for top vehicles, considering multiple factors, including combat, defensiveness, performance, and ease of use, and efficiency as well. Also, this list will not include vehicles that are used for missions or businesses like the MOC, Kasaka, Brigade 6x6, Avenger, etc. Because to me, those are more like mobile properties, not really like separate vehicles. And pretty much almost every player already owns them. And they're more like requirements for certain missions slash businesses. And this will not include glitched vehicles or mission only vehicles like the fully loaded Ruiner 2000, for example. Now, just a disclaimer here. For a lot of these vehicles, there are paywalls, meaning properties or vehicles that you need to own in order to purchase or even customize a lot of these vehicles on this list, so keep that in mind. So starting off with number 10, we have the Armored Karuma. This one can be found on the Summer San Andreas website for a normal price of just under 700000 or a trade price of about 500000 this is one of the most useful vehicles for missions where there's an overwhelming amount of AI enemies in one location because the windows are about 90% bulletproof while at the same time you can shoot out of it with your AP pistol for example to get some very easy and efficient kills. Now do bear in mind that this vehicle cannot take any missiles so that's why I placed it in number 10 and recommended it mainly for missions not so much for free mode since most players will just instantly kill you with some type of explosive one shot and you're dead moving on to number nine we have the kanjali tank this one can be found on the warstock website for a normal price of about 3.8 million and a trade price of about 2.9 million now this tank takes eight homing missiles to blow up which might not seem like a lot, but the fact that you can't get shot out of it with a normal weapon for that long means you're almost guaranteed to get at least one or two kills on someone that's on foot. Plus, of course, you can use it for free mode missions and stuff like that. And of course, it has mines and secondary weapons as well that passengers can use. Moving on to number eight, we have the Night Shark. So this one can be found on the Warstock website for a price of about 1.2 million. This is a heavily armored SUV that takes 27 homing missiles to blow up, which is extremely impressive. Plus, it doesn't have a special map icon, so you can catch a lot of players off guard that think you're driving a normal vehicle. It also has a tow hitch as well, so you can pull around an anti-aircraft trailer if you choose to do so, even though you can't use your own because that's considered a personal vehicle, so you can pull around a friend's anti-aircraft trailer. Plus it has the front mounted machine guns that are useful in certain situations. And with the recent Drug Wars DLC, it can now be used in off-road class races where it's top 5 for most of those, making it an extremely versatile, armored, and quick vehicle. Next up, onto number 7, we have the Akula. So this one can be found on the Warstock website for a normal price of about 3.7 million, or a trade price of just under 2.8 million. This is arguably the best overall helicopter in the game. It has a 50 cal machine gun upgrade available, homing missiles, bombs, plus it has the stealth function where you can appear off the radar when you put the weapons away, making it extremely useful for sneaking up on players, doing missions, etc. It's just a very versatile helicopter. Moving on to number six, we have the Hydra. So this one can be found on the Warstock website for a normal price of just under 4 million or a trade price of 3 million. Now the reason I didn't pick the laser is because firstly it's way overpriced at 6.5 million, especially since you can just steal it from the military base for free, plus with the recent addition of the railgun into GTA Online, it only takes one railgun shot to take down the laser, whereas it takes three to take down the Hydra. Plus, the Hydra has the vertical takeoff function, making it easier to land in certain areas. And of course, the main reason players own it is because of the explosive cannons that are just super overpowered. And of course, the speed of the jets in general makes it very convenient to get around from one side of the map to the other. Continuing to number five, we have the original Oppressor. 
This one can be found on the worst top website for a normal price of about three and a half million and a trade price of about 2.6 million. Now, a lot of people sleep on the Mark I because of the existence of the Mark II, but with all the nerfs the Mark II has received over the years, including the cooldown to recall it, the tracking of the missiles, etc., I think the Mark I is just a great vehicle to own for combat, for getting around the map, and as like an alternative to your Presser Mark II if you're waiting on a cooldown, etc. Now the Mark I is a lot more difficult to use since you actually have to tap the ground every time you want to replenish the boost function, but no cooldown, better missiles than the Mark II, and the fact that you can call it in from your MC and immediately spot it next to you over and over without a cooldown still makes it a great vehicle to own in 2023. Next up, on to number 4, we have the Amani Tech cars with the Missile Jammer and Armor Upgrade. Now the Missile Jammer Upgrade is about 400,000 and the Armor Plating Upgrade is about 150,000 for these cars. Now any of the Amani Tech cars are great. My personal favorite is the Buffalo STX because of how fast it is and the fact that it's a four-door and offers the machine guns up front as well. However, arguably the best Amani Tech cars are the electric ones because they have the highest armor resistance out of all the Amani Tech vehicles. The Omnis EGT with the Amani Tech upgrade takes a very impressive 12 missiles to blow up. And the soon-to-release Ocelot Virtue will also take a similar amount of homing missiles as well since it's also electric. And combining that with the Missile Lock Jammer makes these two by far the most defensive vehicles in the game since a player would actually have to manually aim their missiles and get 12 lucky shots on you which is very difficult. Most players will just leave you alone and go attack someone else. The Imani Tech cars are just the perfect thing to drive around with in free mode. Moving on to number 3, we have the Sparrow from your Kasaka, which is a $1.8 million upgrade. This is not only extremely useful and honestly a necessity for the Gaio Perico Heist setups, it's also a great helicopter in general. It has a homing missiles upgrade with a fantastic fire rate and unlimited missiles. It also has the countermeasures and it's the fastest helicopter currently in the game and to top it off it can be called in through the Kasaka menu in the interaction menu and immediately spawn right next to you. The fact you can spawn the fastest helicopter in the game right next to you in two seconds is honestly very very impressive. Now the only negative to this helicopter is the armor resistance. It's probably one of the most delicate helicopters in the game and it starts smoking and dying pretty easily when you're doing certain missions and getting lightly shot or even just landing too aggressively you can start to damage it quite easily but in general still a fantastic helicopter. Continuing to number two we have the Toreador. So this one can be found on the Warstock website for 3.6 million. Probably my favorite weaponized vehicle in the game. I absolutely love this thing. It has the submarine function, the boost function, missiles, armor, can seat four players, it has a normal map icon, I mean it really has it all, and takes some of the best features from the older weaponized vehicles and kind of puts it into one, plus you can store it in your Kasaka which is very cool. Now this vehicle used to be able to be used in high setups and finales, but with the Drug Wars DLC. Rockstar unfortunately made it not usable anymore in those, but honestly, even with that, I think it's still deserving of its second place spot on this list. And lastly, my number one pick, we have the Oppressor Mark II. This one can be found on the Warstock website for a normal price of just under 3.9 million and a trade price of about 2.9 million. Now I'm sure most people will immediately disagree with me because of the negative stigma this vehicle has with griefers, but honestly if you really think about it, especially you veteran players out there, how often do you use the Oppressor Mark II to get around, to get to certain places, do certain missions and free mode activities and stuff and even heist setups, I mean just grinding in general as well, it's the most useful vehicle in the game quite honestly. And I'm sure most of you will agree. Now, 
it's probably also the, one of the most hated vehicles in the game because of the griefers and all that, but um, you can't deny it is extremely, extremely useful. Now, as most of you may know, this vehicle can be called in from the MC menu and quickly spawn it right next to you. However, Rockstar has been doing nerfs on the Mark II over the years, and it does have a 5-minute cooldown if it gets blown up or you recall it. Now, with the Criminal Enterprises DLC, Rockstar did nerf the missile tracking and the countermeasure capacity slash cooldowns, but honestly, I think that was sort of a good thing to help balance it out a little with other vehicles and make it a lot less overpowered and maybe a little less hated by the community as griefers would have to be a lot more lucky with their shots, but honestly, the Oppressor Mark II, that's just my personal pick. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree, but I'm sure most of you can agree it's probably the vehicle you use the most in game to get around. But anyways guys, there you have it. Those are my top 10 picks for GT Online in 2023. Let me know what your top picks would be down below in the comments and maybe what you agreed with and what you disagreed with in my list and also what other top 10 videos you would like to see. Um, I'd definitely like to do some more of these. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.